Cool. Um, <clears throat> we will have the recording in Sanctuaries, and I will put the links up around for those who want to listen later or watch. Um, but it will also be somewhere within the, the weekly thing here. I don't know where. I'll just send it to them. So it'll be available a couple places. And if you do not want to be have your face recorded, then just take your video your off. Camera off. Yeah. yeah. With this group, everybody will have a big smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think we should dig into this. I'm going to, all right, chat's on, that's on. <clears throat> Welcome to everybody. Welcome to those of you who came live. This is great. It's always nice when we be able to uh, make comments and share things back and forth. So really thrilled to have you here. In addition to our little group who's here live, we have now, uh, we're at 15 at the moment. We have 15 folks on Pine Ridge. That um, looks like Tom is in charge of it this time. And he's got that going through through a speaker. And they were saying, good morning and blessings to you all. They're happy to be part of the group. And we're happy to have you. Blessings to you over in Pine Ridge. Mwah. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here. Good. They can hear that. I'm never sure if they can hear the the uh, other speakers, so they can hear you this time. So Perfect. we're going to dig into this. Chris and I were going to get together, together this morning and talk a little bit about <clears throat> what we're going to do. And it didn't work. I was having connection problems with Pine Ridge. So as always, we're going to just dig into this. And we've done a lot of work around this. Some of you may have been watching Chris and I, um, probably not seen Shami as much visible on it, but she's also a board member of Sanctuaries of the Earth Mother. And we're working a whole lot about this, not just watching and listening to the Earth, but doing what the Earth tells us to letting the earth lead now and just following. And there's been so much stuff coming up just in the last few days. It's just, I'm not even sure where to begin, but we will dig into it. We will see what comes up. I was sharing before the show came on. I don't know who was here yet. Last night I got a um, phone call at 2 a.m., which woke me up. And I grumbled and moaned and I looked and there was a, conference call and um, three of the Kogi were on and I've, I've called into them every once in a while. So I did splash water on my face and get on the call. And that was a quite interesting call with some, some, they repeated some of the prophecies that they have talked about and others before, but some new information. And I think we'll probably weave that in today. This is all about weaving. And I think I'll just say that too, before we start. And then then let's just go quickly around and everybody can introduce themselves. We have talked about weaving. A lot of people were talking about weaving. This week is about weaving. We've been saying it for a couple of years now. For us, this is not uh, reweaving the sacred hoop, which I have said for years when I do ceremony, that we're going to reweave it, that we're going to fix the broken parts. This is about weaving a totally new sacred hoop a totally new way of connecting with the earth, a totally new way of connecting with each other, because the hoop is just too broken. The systems are all broken, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinions. And let's talk about some of that today, too. We have the ability, we have the power to weave a new hoop based on a lot of what we know, a lot of the old prophecies. And I brought that into the meeting in the middle of the night. And it was well received, and they're and actually one of the uh, elder Kogi, one who can call me young man, so that's always fun, um, said, boy, I'm glad you, you all are finally listening, that that is what we need to do. We need to bring this back and start, build from the ground up, you know, put in a, a safe, strong foundation, not, not build on top of things that are crumbling. So that's all I'll say for that. I'm Jim Graywolf. I'm a member of the board of Sanctuaries of the Earth Mother. I'm supposedly retired. I don't know when that's ever going to kick in. Probably never. Um, I've had the great 
pleasure to have traveled quite a bit with Chris over the last four or five months. And we know there's more coming and with others, including Shami. So I'm here just to offer what I've seen and heard, and more importantly, to hear what you all have seen and heard. And we will be bringing in periodically, if I'm looking up and down, I apologize, but it's so I make sure I get messages from our friends on Pine Ridge. And with that, uh, I'll, I'll hold the talking stick and pass it around as needed. Who would like to take it next? Chris is the other host, I guess you. Good morning. A big thing listening to what you're sharing, Jim, when we've looked at the hoop we've been operating from, if indeed it can be called that, because to me it's so broken, that natural flow from one thing to another has been disconnected for a very long time. So instead of having the old hoop here and trying to reweave it, we've got to step out, step into the new line of life, which is earth-driven. Over here, it was ego-driven, driven on a world and the perception of separation, which nothing is. Doing anything with that model is going to end up dysfunctional with that concept, isn't it? So we come over here to the connection, which is learning to listen to the aspects of our own consciousness, which were never separate in the first place. We've had egoic brain, which is just thinking brain, running the show. We've considered that predominant because for most of us, that's all we know how to listen to. Once we learn to listen to the deeper parts of ourselves, which I've got some exercises we do that, we're hearing that natural flow that those connected parts of us are in. Now, what I'm going to suggest, I'll do a very quick exercise here just to invite you in. And I'm going to ask you to experience your breath. Just feel your breath. Do you want to do it now or do you want to get the introductions done first? What do you think? We'll do the introductions. Yeah, just so we know who's in the pot. Yeah. And then we'll just okay. do, then we'll do a quick... I'm Christopher. I'm from New Zealand. I talk to trees, especially the ones you see behind me in the photo. <laughs> and the redwoods. Yeah. Oh, God, the redwoods. They've been speaking this morning. They've got something to say as well. Okay. And so, I'll pass the pick, talking stick on to the next one of my line of pictures is Nancy. Thank you, Christopher. I'm Nancy. I live in Clarkdale, Arizona, which is quite near to Sedona. I've lived here 13 years. I love this area because of the nature of the river, the trees. Um, that's the biggest reason I love this. Um, a little bit about myself. As a child, I always went out into the woods in Michigan. And that was where I found my God, I guess you would say. And um, I didn't know what it was, but it was natural for me. And so throughout the years, I've done camping and hiking and, and um, connecting. And I really didn't know what I was doing, but I knew it was a safe place and I knew it was a place to get centered. So, um, and I've studied Native American uh, traditions, medicine wheel teachings, things like that. And for many years, I believed that we were all connected. Um, I, I thought that, I thought it, I thought it. And then one day I realized, I don't, I don't no longer think it, I know it. And so I got to this another place of just really realizing everything. I mean, even my table, I'm connected. It has energy. We are all energetic beings. And so my my choice and my challenge is to continue to be connected. And so that's why I'm grateful for this this connection with this group. And I'm here to learn and experience and just expand in my consciousness, in my connection. So thank you all for being here. Aho. <laughs> Aho. Pass it over to Shami. Buenos dias or buenos tardes, <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> um, Shami uh, is my, one of my names. <laughs> My birth name, Shemaine Morejon. I'm of uh, Cuban, Sicilian, Hungarian descent and ancestry. And um, 
wasn't quite raised with deep rooted rituals or ceremonies within those lineages. So I have had this path of rediscovering and remembering um, and putting a bunch of pieces together that are known and unknown. And I've um, woven into being this human incarnation that is very connected to all of the elements and um, is growing in connection in a different connection to creator and God, great spirit, however you um, want to identify that divine energy. And um, yeah, I've been, I'm just uh, someone who leads from the heart often, who leads from instinct, who connects to the wild in myself, my internal fires and connecting to um all of the living beings, all of the microscopic organisms that surround us. Um, my mission in life and why I'm part of um, the Council of Sanctuaries is to uh, foremost keep growing um, with a community that has a consciousness that's elevated beyond the base levels of ego and materialism and attachment to those things um and the goal is to weave a new system so that we don't have to depend on this broken system that does not serve and support the well-being of all living beings um it is a one faceted system right now that serves the one percent and does not have our earth mother in its wholehearted movement forward. So I am somewhat of an activist and had a lot of time in Los Angeles of reflection of all of these beings that are so connected, but yet are dismissed on this daily basis when people are in their bubbles. So I'm prepared to help break those bubbles open and melt people's hearts and melt their minds out of here and just coming into here. So. Yeah, I'm Shemaine. Thanks for having me. And I'm happy to Thank contribute you. however in my service. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And so I will try to relay, <clears throat> pardon me, one of the grandmothers up on Pine Ridge. They don't just, I don't think I said it, they don't have computer capability where they are in particular. So they often will join us and they're listening to us. They can hear it through the phone and some speaker that Tom hooked up, and then they're relaying here, whatever they want to get back to the group. One of these days, I hope to solve that issue. But so at the moment, there's actually now 11 people there. Two had to leave. There's 11 who are staying. <clears throat> Grandmother said, and I just realized I typed this in, but that won't help any of you who see this later. So originally she said, Living close to the earth, we have followed the earth's rules for all of our generations. This is Grandmother Ruth. Grandmother Ruth is telling me that she's 93. She is the senior there today. Today they have people from eight, eight years old, up to her, 93. So that's who's with us there. She is... They're all happy to be here. They also would like to hear what the Kogi had to say, since their own medicine people have shared quite a bit. This will be great. I'm going to step out of that for a second. Um, I'll share some of that as we go through. But it would be nice to, to look at the two. So you all up there, if things come to you about your prophecies, what your elders are saying, Please share if they're the same, if they're different, or whatever, as we go along. And so she said she doesn't want to speak too long. You know how we elders are. <laughs> She's happy to be here. They're all happy to be here. And they thank thank all of us for welcoming, welcoming them in. Thank you, Grandmother. Woo, okay. Thank you, so, Grandmother. Everyone is thanking you. All right, we did all the all the common courtesies now we all know we're here in, in good in a good way so why don't we um just a short dose of uh something that for chris to lead us on to set some energy here is that good chris
There we go. Yes, more than welcome. And I'll go back to the breathing exercise, but I'll vary it a little bit. I'm asking this as a not a suggestion to listen to, but something to follow, to experience. So as we feel the rhythm of our breath, we experience the breath. And at this stage, they're asking me to ask, is it just my breath or is it more than my breath? And to follow this breath to wherever it goes, notice our connections, our rhythms, not just of ourselves, but of that which we touch. And as we touch through this breath, in this breath, Notice the variation of rhythms of that which we touch as we blend into that which we touch in its rhythm. Notice how connected we become. We can feel it with the earth. We can feel it with the air itself that we breathe. Is the air conscious? Is it present? Does it feel us as we feel it? Does the earth underneath the air feel the air? Does this earth breathe? And if we feel the earth breathe, I invite you to drop into this breath of the earth. Feel her. Feel her rhythm. Feel her presence. And feel her consciousness. It's in this presence and consciousness that we hear the messages that she brings to us. And she invites us, as we feel her, we feel our breath, to feel if there's a deeper rhythm our body feels drawn to breathe at. And we drop into that deeper rhythm. And as we drop into this deeper rhythm, notice how broad it is, how wide it is. Notice its depth, its clarity. Notice how much we perceive the earth from there and all the other sensations we're experiencing before. Are they the same or are they different? And from there, we drop down to the third rhythm, the deepest rhythm of the breath. Feeling through that second rhythm. Is there a third rhythm that the body and the breath asks us to breathe at? Dropping into that, immersing ourselves totally and completely into the experience. Breathing this experience of the third rhythm of the breath. Feel its encompassing nature. Feel its presence. Does it occupy space or is it something completely different? Is it just vastness? And that is from this third rhythm of the breath, how we perceive ourselves. and our presence and interaction with the world. From this third rhythm of the breath, is it the same as the first rhythm? Or is it different? Noticing these differences and how we feel with them. Are we more present? Are we more, more whole? Are we more in the moment? And how much do we hear in the moment? Not just the world we experience. Not just our own thoughts. Is there a prince, presence and aliveness to be felt in this third rhythm of the breath? And I want you to breathe into that aliveness. 
feeling it for me. I feel it coming from the earth up through us, vitalizing us, shifting the cells in our body and our mind and our consciousness and rewiring us for a new earth experienced through these senses. Notice these senses in the third rhythm of the breath, which we experience this aliveness. This aliveness and vitality, it flows through all being in the third rhythm of the breath. And I want you to breathe into it. Notice its imprint on our body. As we come back to the here and now, into this moment, into our bodies again, being aware of our body, where it's sitting, into our presence here and now, who we're talking to and listening to. Just quietly and gently opening our eyes again, being back in the here and now. What we're doing is practicing presence. And as we come back, this is the place that I listen to nature, to the trees. This is where they talk to me. Not as a separate entity or being, but as a part and ever-encompassing. It's almost a consuming consciousness because that consciousness is everywhere the same with different frequencies and vibrations, listening to the same life force. This is the place we contact it. The first rhythm of the breath is driven by the thinking brain. We call it ego. But I think thinking brain is more apt. The second rhythm of the breath is when we drop through that thinking brain into awareness. Consciousness and aspects of our consciousness has a rhythm. We inherently know it. This is why we listen to the rhythms of the breath and then the presence and consciousness that comes with that rhythm. We talk about raising our vibration. What we're doing is dropping into the vibrations we naturally have and have always had. When we're trying to raise our vibration, we're trying to tune into these vibrations and rhythms that we naturally have, but forgot how to listen to. This is a practice, and we have this meditation in a much longer version recorded with Sotam and it's available on the Sotum website. When we learn to listen from these different rhythms of the breath, we hear the consciousness that comes with it, that we inhabit in that rhythm, and we get used to coming from it. For me, the earth is very much saying at the moment, like she's literally, for me, very loudly talking in my ear, she wants us to learn to listen to this third rhythm of the breath, of the consciousness comes with it, and start inhabiting that. We then go to the second rhythm to transfer it through to the, to the physical realm, to the world we live in. We've tried to drive it from the brain, which is a disconnected part. That's the first rhythm of the breath. If you notice how connected you feel in the first rhythm, then drop through the other rhythms and see how connected they feel. Notice the sensations of each rhythm of the breath. To me, the third rhythm of the breath has the deepest, broadest, and vastest range of sensations, the most connecting. And that's what we learn to listen to. And then we bring that back to the physical world. Right. Me being me at this stage, I'd like to ask if there's any questions with any of this because I've given a very short version of this. Is there anything anybody would like to ask at this point? No. Oh, Shemaine. Do it. Oh. Maybe just a reflection. Um, so I'm, I'm going through my yoga teacher training like officially right now. And we're speaking of the of the um the limbs of yoga and how and it's it's relating to the rhythms of the heart to me or the with rhythms of the breath to me because it's like you said the first rhythm is the brain the second rhythm is the body and the third rhythm is the third and I feel like there's many layers of that third rhythm as well 
that are in tune with our most natural vibration are, which to me is like our love frequency because love is the highest vibration possible in my perspective. And so the yogas are about calming, even like the first three yoga sutras are about, um, you know, the, we're practicing yoga now we're in the now in the presence we're, um, re, uh, we're calming and stilling the brain. We're detaching from our, that we're our brain, we're our body. We're not our mind. We're not our body. We are our soul. And that's what your rhythms of the breath is reminding me of is reminding us of our soul, remembering what our soul vibration is versus getting caught up in the mind and the body. And that's my reflection of that. Good. <clears throat> Thank you for that. One of the things that I've found now, I've just given an exercise where we use three rhythms of the breath. When I do it myself, there's actually a fourth rhythm that I don't usually introduce people too much because that's actually getting into pure consciousness. The point you bring up, which is really valid here, Sh Shami, is when we go into the breath and the rhythms, there's the first layer out of pure consciousness, which is the first layer of creation to me, is that unconditional love, which is the creative energy from which everything is created from, with, in, and by. Everything is made from unconditional love. When we get used to listening to our own vibration, so we go inwards with these breaths and follow the natural rhythm of those breaths that our body draws us to drop into and be present with, we get to that creative energy, which is unconditional love for everything, everyone, every being and the space between all being, because it inhabits that as well. Once you start bringing with, breathing with that, I find the creative potential. It's like we swim through this creative potential. We can see what is available to every single space as well as to our own mind. And it asks us to step into it. You know, the fact that we have health problems shouldn't exist. When I'm in this life flow, it's rearranging the cells in my body. And she pushed me into this recently um, through a medical issue. Um, and it was like either live or die. And I didn't accept that was the, you know, the medical diagnosis, death was the only option. I didn't accept that because I could feel life and I, in my mind, if I've got life, I can breathe with it. And this is where she taught me the rhythms of the breath. If I want life, I've got to drop into the rhythms of life, not into the rhythms of death, which is the separation, which is that first rhythm of the breath. She got me into the trees, which once again, you can see in the photo behind me, was literally these trees in the photo. She speaks to me the most and she draws me into there and she lectures me about life from a living experience. Now, in that life energy hey chris it's yep let's, let's let's bring to an end so we can move ahead with more comments and more questions where we're going to get cool. home on yoga for the whole time which we are going to have programs in all these pieces too by the way i know i'm preparing some i know chris is i know shami is so let's, let's do a wrap up or or are there any other questions on it before we move on Go ahead, bring us back to earth, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, one of the things that I, I notice when I come out of this technique, as I come back through the rhythms of the breath, I notice I bring part of every layer of that consciousness I've touched back with me. So when I come back from the third to the second rhythm, back to the first rhythm, the second and third always re remain with me. There is a residual effect. The more I practice the deeper rhythms of the breath, the more the residual effect lasts. And the idea is we get to the stage where they're with us all the time, which means we've got all aspects of our consciousness um, 
communicating with and being present with us all the time. So I'll wrap it up there. Thank you, brother. It's always good to start these with Chris taking us on some meditative jaunt, put us in the right place. Um, so we start it for the introductions and people coming and going. This is really neat. <clears throat> they could hear you up there, by the way, so that's perfect. I held the phone so the people on Pine Ridge were listening. Usually they can't, so whatever speaker he's got going on is helping. So we're our main thrust today, I think, is to talk about not only listening to the earth, but doing what the earth tells us to do. Chris just brought in one important piece, meditating on what the earth is bringing us. And I don't know about you all, but I'll sit under the redwoods or next to the river here or anywhere else and just get totally quiet and just listen and wait to hear what I hear. Sometimes it's the trees, sometimes it's the water, sometimes it's the mother. Sometimes I don't know what it is. What? Um, where do we want to get started with that? Does anybody want to comment on that? Does it make sense to actually do what the earth is telling us to do? I can drop something in there. <laughs> and if anybody else ha has any questions at any time, please um, there's a little thing down the bottom where you can raise your hand. Any questions, any experiences you would like to share, please do. The one thing nature has shown me so much, we don't do this in separation. We work as community. So, Martina, I'll hand over to you. Okay. So, um, when it comes to listening to nature, Mother Earth, um, like, I don't have the gift of sight or hearing whatever clairvoyance thing you call it. It's always been feeling for me, like empathic and stuff like that, or noticing the signs. I feel most of my life, I feel like when they're trying to talk to me, they send me signs that only I can seem to understand and click with. Like a, just share a quick story. I was out in a local park, uh, picking up trash and illegal dumped rubbish that had been going on for many years. And this particular day, I was feeling really down the dumps, feeling that everything I was doing wasn't making a slick lot of difference. Like I was fighting the mythical Hydra, you know, the creature where you chop off its head and to take its place. That's kind of how I felt about this project, about picking up this trash, because it felt like, Every time I picked up the trash, people would keep dumping it, yada, yada, yada. So um, I went over to the river and I was looking down as it was flowing past. And I actually remember just speaking out loud. Can you please just show me if I'm making any difference? Because I am close to giving up here now. And the second I said that, what comes floating down the stream but a mother duck and three adorable little babies. And what's extraordinary about this, guys, is this particular river was also polluted. In the years I've lived here, very little wildlife because of the pollution. So to see those four amazing creatures, the natural animals of this river, return and be there. I just, I remember my eyes opening like that. When because I couldn't believe it, because it felt like, oh my God, something heard me. And I tried to follow them further downstream. And as mysteriously as they appeared, they disappeared. And I looked everywhere for them. I thought maybe they had gone up on the riverbank. I looked among the reeds. I couldn't find them anywhere. And I knew then this was a sign that something maybe nature, mother nature, something heard me and gave me a sign say, behold, you are making a difference. You are restoring the balance. You are creating ripples. Please keep being a guardian and protector and caretaker for this river and this park. You are making a difference. And I'm glad to say this was the first of many other incidences and signs 
throughout my life that have proven something is that something is listening and sometimes depending on who we are they will send us signs signs that we can understand so that's my story to share that's beautiful wow thank you Martina. really beautiful thank you you mm -hmm. have a lot of Powerful pieces in there. Let me try to list some and then we'll open it to see who wants to comment on them, if I can even remember them all. Um, I put a couple of things up on the chat for those who will hear this later from Pine Ridge. First, um, Martina was thanked because it is about all the senses and we need to remember that. And Chris is big at that. And that's why he brings in some of that at the beginning. You got to use all your senses. It's not about just seeing. It's not about just hearing. I'm like Martina. I usually feel things. Sometimes I see pictures. I rarely hear words. If I hear words, I really pay attention because they're about to, to kick my butt. So there's that. And then there is, we all make a change just by being here. Comes from a nine-year-old up on, on the ridge. So if a nine-year-old can see it, <clears throat> and uh, Martina, I'm a couple of years older than you, I suspect. And I know that feeling of, oh, damn it, I'm just going to give up. I'm going to go walk off somewhere. And I know we're all feeling it, especially now. But I, that's not the way. The more we can unite, the more we will be able to do, the more we are doing. And some of that's here in the virtual realm. Some of it's in the physical realm. Just doing what we can, you know, picking up trash. I've been picking up trash in natural areas probably for 50 years, maybe more. I just would like to find the people doing it so I could kick them in the butt. And you know what? I just put that away, put it aside, and I pick up the trash. And I carry a bag with me all the time. Or if I'm in my car, then I just, you know, we put it in the back of the car. And Chris and I, as we traveled around, even driving through the Redwoods, we'd stop. And at the end of the day, we'd have a, a little pile in the back of the car. Not too much, I was happy to see. So there's that thing about keeping the faith, I guess, hanging in there, knowing we are making a difference, coming on this show together, we're making a difference. Those who hear this later, you're making a difference. Um, using all the senses, that's a key one. I know there were others in there. Maybe the rest of you guys will have them because I, I'm sure glad we're recording this. All right, who was up first, Shami or Chris? Shami, go ahead. Or Chris, I don't know. Yeah, Shami, I want to... Christopher's up. Go. Get it. Get it, Christopher. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I was going to say, say, Martina, the way you're describing how you're picking things up is what it's like. It comes through whatever sense we have available. It can then expand out into the others. Once we get used to one, we find the other senses come in. The three rhythms of the breath what I like about practicing them. The first rhythm, I feel the senses of the brain, which is feeling, touch, taste, whatever. When you drop into the second rhythm, you notice the senses you've got are different. So we get used to using those senses, third rhythm, fourth rhythm of the breath, all the same. They each have their own range of senses, which are different. And it's learning to use those range of senses we've got, as well as the consciousness that comes with it. So listen to the way you get it, except that's the way it communicates. And I find when I'm talking with the trees in nature, it doesn't talk in words like we humans do. It talks in whole concepts and whole impressions, and it just drops it in in one instant. So it's like getting 10,000 or 100,000 words in a single instant. And you get all the concepts and connotations with it, as well as the experience. You can't bring your brain into this. Your brain just scrambles yeah. and is left flopping yeah. on the side like a fish flopping out of water. Yeah, you're, and you're, this you're is totally what right, Chris. You're one hundred percent right, Chris. Because when you have the gifts you have, whether it's sight, sound, feeling, you're meant to have it. Because I think, in a way, it's a blessing that I only can commune through feeling. Because uh, my father, I think, in a way, if things went differently, he would have been more spiritual than me. But because wrong place, wrong time he didn't get the support he needed. So his senses 
overloaded. He could see things. He could hear things. He was probably spiritually connected, but there was no support. So his brain literally fried and he started developing dementia at 40 years of age. So in a way, I guess that could have been me. It could have been passed on to me. My brain could have fried before I'm ready. So I guess in a way, I'm glad that in this lifetime, I am an empath because I know that if you're not, and I have heard stories that if you're not ready to receive what you are, like whether it's seeing things or hearing things, it can have a very destructive impact on you, particularly if you don't have the support to kind of channel the energy out. So yeah, totally agree with you. Thanks. Good exchange. I'm going to keep things moving along because we have 45 minutes more, but we are we are set to the time this time because we're programming a in a weekly thing. That is really good. And it's um before I shift it up there to Shami. That happens to a lot of us. Martina, my grandmother was a, a medicine woman woman over in Europe before coming here. <clears throat> and as she told me, Jim, it, it's totally passing a generation. No one in your parents' generation is carrying that medicine or even understands it. It's coming to you. And it was years before I realized that. So a lot of us feel like we're just hanging out there. But the reality is it's building in us for whatever reason. We're learning what we need to learn. Um, that's horrible with your father getting it that early and getting ill that early. My father also, he was 45 when he had um, breathing problems. So he was, so those things do happen. They're not easy, but sometimes this road is is not easy. And just know it's happening to a lot of people. That's for, for sure. We're not the weird ones. We're just the ones tuned in. Shami. Yeah, and the weird will become normal. <laughs> and the normal will become the odd. And the more connected we become, the more normalized it is. And the more we vocalize and act in a way that is connected and conscious, the more we create that as our reality. Um, yeah, I just, I have so much in resonance with what you both have been saying. And um, I really feel into that. Those who are spiritually connected with no support. I feel like my grandfather was always, um, he's Hungarian and he's very connected. My uncle as well, like touch people's hands and he'll feel their whole life for the good, for the better or worse. But, um, they kind of both didn't really use their powers or magic or their connectiveness, um, in a way that they could amplify it, um, or in a way that felt, I guess, supported to be amplified. Um, and my grandfather would always say to me, like, like almost like um, passing on the responsibility, like, it's up to you to, to make the revolution happen. This is up, up to you, you know, and always kind of passing that on. And so I think that we in this generation and who are chose to be on this earth right now have those powers for that reason, like you all were saying, because we are strengthening in our root and all along the chakra centers, all along our meridian lines to be able to translate all the messages that are being received, to even be able to feel and hear and taste and smell all of the signs that are around to receive. And um, when you were speaking of, um, you know, the, uh, the ducks coming in and that's how the earth mother um spoke to you in your questions. I ask these questions all the time and I, I lead um, a very humble uh, wellness center. And sometimes I'm like, who the hell am I to be guiding people on this stuff? Right? Like, like, I don't even know, like I, I've had to, you know, since I met Jim and been introduced to some, um, a lot of um, indigenous practices, I've been opening to the four directions, right? And, but in order to do that, I have to practice it. And so like, all I knew at the beginning was the East. And then I was like, I don't know. And so I have like my notebook out when I'm like trying to just make this a practice, even when I'm like in guiding a class or a hike or whatever, right? So I'm like, take people up to this ridge line. I'm like taking them on a meditative hike and flow is what I call it. And we go up through the mountain. We 
Um, and I guide them through like an L connecting element to the elements meditation at the top. And we're sitting at the top and, and it's like the biggest group I have, which is like three participants. <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, um, you know, I'm, I'm guiding through this meditation that I did not plan. I don't plan for nearly anything, really. It just flows out. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I don't know what I'm saying right now. My words were kind of jumbled. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, just see this big cloud. Um, the snow starts coming in. And I'm speaking to that and I'm saying how grateful I am for the moisture, for the waters to come in and to cleanse and um, for the cold to come in and remind us of rest. And then all of a sudden, and I'm, you know, some people are like kind of restless, getting settled in. And then all of a sudden, like right as I speak to that gratitude, it starts rain, it's lightly raining and everyone, and I'm like, I don't know how people are going to take this, but I'm just going to guide the meditation in a way to appreciate this, this element coming down that could create this uncomfortability. And at the end, I'm like having, you know, I'm like raising my hands up and people are just like really embracing and submersing in this water. And it's, it was that like reminder, like, no, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be your comfortability in what some may be uncomfortable in is helping transition that consciousness. And it, to me, was a sign of like, don't worry about planning shit, just it'll flow and you don't have to be perfect. Everyone's going to receive the medicine that you, they need. Yep. So I don't know. That Beautiful. was my. <laughs> no, no, thank you. That's good. Uh, and while before you actually said it, I was typing it in from the note here. Suze from Pine Ridge, the medicine is there. And she said the medicine is always there, but not all choose to use it. And I know there were some in my mother's generation who saw the medicine and chose not to use it. I think most of us sitting here, are probably all of us now, and all of us doing this work, we chose to use it. And it's got, it's got its beauty, and it's also got its difficulties at times. So that's that's absolutely part of it. Hey, Nancy, I want to make sure everyone's getting a chance. Anything you want to toss in, or are you good just listening and absorbing? Well, I'm kind of listening and absorbing, and, and yeah. it's reminding me of a lot of things of Perfect. where I doubted that I have abilities because I don't, uh, well, once in a while I do hear things. And like you said, I do listen at that point, but there are a lot of messages if we're open to them. And, and the animals are really big for that. Um, so I'm just kind of listening and, and reaffirming to myself that yes, what I'm doing is right. It may seem to me to be very small steps uh, Shami, I appreciate your share because recently in a social uh, spiritual gathering, I stepped up and I spoke. And then next thing I know it, I was expressing myself emotionally and I was, you know, in the words were coming that I never thought I knew. And I thought, oh, I don't know what I'm saying. And then all of a sudden the words came that were just perfect to be heard. So uh, I appreciate your sharing to remind me this is what I need to do and to own my own power and to own what I do know. And it may feel small if I let myself compare myself to others, but it may seem large if I let myself compare myself to others. So it's the dichotomy of life mm -hmm. and I'm learning this and I feel like this is gonna be a really big year for me in expressing that and sharing that and it all comes from love and surrounding myself with people like this. And yeah, it's great. Awesome. I love that. Sorry. I love that reminder of like, not to compare yourself with others. Cause that's in the mind and that can belittle your magic and your power that you have and to stunt such growth. So that's, that's something really huge. Um, I'm going to ask yeah. Chris to talk a little about that too, Shami, you're right. But what I also got from, uh, as you were talking, Nancy, I got power to Nancy. That comes from Pine Ridge. So they're recognizing your uh, willingness to step up and, and share. So thank you. 
And that's what this is about. And yeah, Shami, you're, you're so right. No one's more than, no one's less than. Um, we sometimes have different pieces of the puzzle we carry. And that is the power of it. So there's times we step up and we lead. There's times we sit down and let others lead, whoever has the best skills. But we all should share our voice right now, all of us, in whatever way we see it, feel it. And we'll know what we're supposed to do. Um, let me shift up. Chris just had his hand up. But I don't know, Chris, maybe a little bit, too, about that. Um, this is not the time of the head. This is definitely the time of the heart. We sure as heck of. I mean, we're slow learners, and we figured it out. Yeah, yeah and Jim and I were together. I've done, gone on a trip to the U.S., and Jim and I had been together for three days, and we stopped one day and just realized nothing we were doing from our heads worked. And it was only when we felt into things that it had a flow. We felt to turn here on the road or turn there. And when we stayed in that flow, things happened literally within an instant sometimes. And I was learning to follow that. Now, a lot of it, when we look at following instincts, a lot of us trying to bring all the experience and information into the body, which is essentially bringing it into the head. What I find is getting used to expanding our awareness out to where we're feeling called, whether it's to nature, the tree, our feet on the earth, expand our mind out to the information, to the knowledge and the being, rather than trying to bring it in the body, because I find that constricts the energy. When we're first feeling it, we're feeling it, like you said, Martina, as a whole experience. And it's learning to listen to that experience or that energy, where it is, as it is, how it is. The other bit I'd like to quickly speak to is when the tree showed me life and community, the tree that I was talking to at the time showed me her community, which is the microbiome and the earth. And she showed me how every little molecule of fungus that feeds her around her microbiome was as vital as the biggest tree. The biggest tree does not survive without the smallest component, which is a bacterium. One is dependent on the other. And she showed me that nothing in life is separate from anything else. And it's only in this natural interconnected web that we all have, which she showed me, that we thrive. Talking stick in the middle. Great. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. And that's just so. He mentions, you know, every little bit of the tree. Being up in the Redwoods and we spent, I don't know, five days or something right in the heart of the Redwoods. We were able to live there, which was really nice. Um, the Redwoods are a special case. And I'll just say it quickly so it's just out there. Um they only exist there on the planet, in that part of California. And partly it's because the components are so unique and rare and they have to be combined in a certain way. So they're so big that water cannot be carried up their trunk. So they have to be in an ecosystem where there's a lot of moisture and dampness and mostly um, not just fog, but water mo molecules up in the air. Because that's how the upper part of the tree actually gets its water. There's certain insects at different levels of the redwoods that have to be involved and therefore certain birds. So it's a great example of, they are total diverse ecosystems in and of themselves. And that makes them great tools to learn from. And we sure felt it when, when we were there. Um, okay, I was gonna shift it over. Should I bring in some of the words of the Kogi so we can kick those around or do you want anything else on this part there's thumbs up thumbs up um, can i just quickly ask what is yeah. the kogi okay good thank you very much sometimes we forget that we don't all have the same teachings <laughs> yeah i had to look it up i literally looked it up like oops well and i may have said it I right was like... the beginning, but that doesn't help okay we'll do that quickly and Martina, I love your accent, whatever it is. So 
keep talking. Yeah, I'm from Cork City, Ireland. So uh, I thought it was Cork. okay. That's what I thought. Thank you. <laughs> um, the Kogi. I'll just give it a quick thumbnail sketch. The Kogi live mostly in Colombia, up high, way up in the top of the mountains. They are the least connected with um, group of people on the planet, as far as we know. They didn't come down at all for the longest time and just existed up in their own places. From my experience, they started coming down on occasion seven or eight years ago and would speak at different things. I know we were doing a, a round table one time that I was part of leading and uh, I got a message like 30 minutes before and I hadn't really connected with them from a woman who connected with them. And she said they would really love to be part of this circle. Can they come in? So, I mean, we rearranged the whole thing uh, and they literally came down thousands and thousands of feet to be there. And usually they have two or three of their people come. We had like seven. And so they bring down the teachings. They're, they are, I'm sure, in my opinion, they're the most connected people to the earth on the earth. Because to live up where they are in the way they do, they don't have any modern conveniences. I still think that's pretty much the case. Occasionally, they'll invite somebody to come up. We know uh, we have a singer who's worked with us before, a beautiful woman, beautiful voice, who's been invited up to a couple of their um, communities. So they, they know the prophecies big time. They've been correct probably more times than any other on the planet. I see Shami says they are known as Jaguar people to some. I don't know if they call themselves that. I've never heard them call themselves that. I've heard them call themselves people of the earth. That's what I've heard most often. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of their prophecies have been talked about for quite a while. And like I said, many of them have already um, really turned out to be quite accurate. Some of them are pretty intense. And it's interesting because our friends, uh, uh, Tom, I was starting to type it. I can get to finish. Um, being up against the, being up against time, meaning our time is short to do some things, is not uh, something to be feared, but something we must deal with. Because the prophecies are pretty intense. So the Kogi one, most relevant, and the one we were talking about again last night, uh, and we don't bring it up too much, except now time is short. So we probably need to bring it up, chat about it, see what we can do. Is that we're now down to maybe six months, maybe a little more than that, that we humans have to make some enormous changes. Or we're going to see the elementals take off a lot of people. And some of that may help, it may help, not help, may happen regardless the mother, the earth will balance things out if we don't. And that's the that's where we're at now. So it's doing all we can to show we're making those changes. And I think we're doing a good job at that. And they were saying again last night, yes, they're getting that. Um, we brought up all the things going on weather-wise, the elements around us, which are not being reported and certainly not being reported as a connection between them all. In the past week, I'm, I'm, I've just been kind of paying attention and making notes. The number of elemental um, difficulties around the globe has been incredible. We've had floods, we've had earthquakes, earthquakes in Japan, floods in California, floods in Hawaii, um, freezings up in the northern part of the U.S., all kinds of things going on. And so uh, we had the, um, in Iceland, we had the big eruption that they'd been waiting on um, and a lot of other things. Floods in Ireland too, okay? See, I didn't even know that. Unless you actually go and search for this stuff, it's hard to find because no one comes on and says, hey, look at all these things, are they connected? But they are connected. And it's the earth telling us she's going to work with us, but we better move our butts a lot quicker than we have been. And that's what the Kogi were saying again. And they were saying, the other big part of that, I've talked quite a bit about the various elements. And I know Chris and I have done programs on it. I don't know if Shami and I have or not. Um, but this is not just about being an activist. I've been an activist for 
about 150 years, it feels like. Um, but you have to use activism, prayer, ceremony, education. We need to be using all the pieces, all the pieces. And if we don't, we're not going to be effective. And so it's combining the elements and it's using love as, as the glue. That's pretty much what was being said last night. And a lot of us have been saying that for a while, too. That one took me a long time to, to learn. And I want to share here, Martina put in, entire town nearly went underwater. Uh, I'm assuming she means in Ireland again. Luckily, no one was hurt or killed, and the water dried up. Yeah. And and I'm watching some people, and it's like, I, I don't know what the hell they're doing. The, these waters were coming in. California is the one I saw, but I'm told it was happening in Hawaii and other places. Um, these waters are coming in these huge waves about to come, and these people are all there with their cameras. The next thing you know, you know, there's 100 people trying to run up the road. And, and it's just, it's crazy. There's behaviors are just getting a little nuts. So that's part of the, uh, a lot of the prophecies as well. I see our friends are starting to type. So we'll see what they're saying about prophecy is that everything's going to be upside down. And that's, I think, part of what we're seeing, including human behavior. Um, so that's it for too many distractions from Shami. Yeah. And a lot of these things are meant to be distractions. So we don't focus on the key element, which is how do we come together as two legates, as humans, and how do we connect again with the earth in a way that's all in balance? And that's, uh, I think that's what I've got from the Kogi. If anything else comes to me, as you, as we all talk, I'll just throw it in there. I was making some notes, but as I said, it was after two in the morning and I was, you know, hold my eyes open this way. Who wants to... Uh, jump in uh yeah i'd like to put my word in uh very interested in what you're saying because uh this is something i'm doing my own research and studying because uh the weather is getting pardon my french here really fucked up here in ireland like like i just mentioned uh, a local town nearly went underwater last week uh, last month and it wasn't even near the ocean a river burst its banks and flooded the entire town. I think a bridge collapsed or something, but it was um, a major wake up call for a lot of people because that sort of stuff doesn't happen. Like you might hear a bit of destruction happening in the coast. We also had a tornado. Yes. Oh my God. That was the most freakiest thing of all. Uh, a tornado literally hit a town, a village, and it only lasted one minute. And it wiped out nearly a whole bunch of trees and two buildings. And it freaked everyone out because we do not get tornadoes here. So I'm kind of asked, been doing research in how can I commune with the elements to give us more time to get our act together? Because there are really good people here that are fighting the good fight and uh, they're going to get wiped out with all the other idiots <laughs> if the shit hits the fan. So I'm kind of, I was researching, how can I slow this down? And one thing I kind of came across, I don't know if you've ever heard of the violet fire or something like that. I kind of discovered it in a book called uh, Is Mother Nature Mad by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. Uh, if you haven't read it, I recommend reading it. It's a very interesting concept on elementals. She actually gives mm. each of the elementals a name. Uh, undines for water, silps for the air, salamanders for fire, gnomes for the earth. And I kind of like that concept because it helped me connect with them. And now when I'm working with the elementals, and I, I don't even think it matters how you work, it's all about energy. I'm kind of saying violet fire, transform the negative energy trapped in these clouds, trapped in this storm into positive energy, not good or bad. I'm saying negative energy, positive energy, like a battery or something, because the universe doesn't believe in good and bad energy. It's all energy. And uh, just saying reduce the humidity, reduce the precipitation, 
uh, decrease the temperature on the planet, you know, stuff that actually creates rain. Understanding how they work. And you want to know something amazing, guys? It worked. Like not all the time, but a lot of the time when I get into this frame of mind and I'm like putting my hands up and I'm actually imagining the energy and I'm talking to them. I can actually change the weather in a way or I can slow it down and make it less destructive. And this isn't something new. There's loads of other people that can do what I can do and probably better, but it is possible. We can commune with the elements. We, they are listening. We just got to talk to them and figure out how they tick. Understand maybe the scientific side, like humidity, precipitation, the temperatures, the polar front. You could probably learn all this if you look up a weather map, but then go off and read books like Is Mother Nature Mad to understand the spiritual side of things. Mix them both together and... Yeah, I think we're, we can get somewhere. That that has been my experience, and it gives me hope that we can make a difference. So, yeah, thank you for listening. No, that's great. And once again, as you were doing that, I was typing in um, from our friends on the res. This is the time of major human change, especially in their spirits, the human spirits or else Earth will use her elementals to wake us up. And it's, that's the same message I think you're saying. They're, they're also saying that it's this year that everything's about to pivot. It's pivoting now. I mean, we're seeing, we're actually seeing a lot of large numbers of people start to leave through some of these elemental effects. Um, and I think you're right too. What else did you say? Yeah, I mean, it's how you do it. It's mixing the things up. Don't keep trying to do the things we've done before to make it better. It ain't going to work. Science can't solve this alone. Human, human shifts are not going to solve this alone. It's going to take a whole bunch of new ways of thinking because we're dealing with new effects. So thank you. That's great. Mr. Chris. Hello. Um God, Martina, your talk alone, there's so much I could add into that. Um, the violet flame that you talk about with Elizabeth Clare Prophet, that's part of a religious group. Um, their main book for anybody who's interested is called the Urantia book, um, along with uh, the individual books they've written. Really, yeah, like many sources of information worthwhile. Um, as you were talking also, the trees show me this image of picking up one of us two-leggeds by our feet, holding us upside down, shaking us, putting us back down and say, now now settle down and learn to see it from a different angle because it was, they were hanging us upside down to say, see it this way. It's like turning our whole world upside down. One thing the tree shared with me very clearly recently before I did the trip to the US is it's time to live in their guidance now not the trees, but the earth itself, because the earth sometimes speaks through the trees. Um, the redwoods are the key tree species for that. They live and talk as the earth from the earth. Now, I'm just throwing this out there, and you guys can see how me and Jim do things sometimes. When you were talking about the kogi and the redwoods, I was feeling them, and it's like the kogi and the redwoods are basically the same. They're from the earth, part of the earth and talk for the earth it felt like their voices were one and the same does that feel right to you jim right jim's it not does. responding i had to find my i had to find my mic i'm looking for go ahead yeah it does definitely yeah so this is how jim and i work one of us gets a bit of information we toss it around with the other one and we start building the picture up which once again, as the tree said to me, we work in community. I have lived my whole life up until recently living as a solo entity, not really wanting a lot to do with people because to me, they weren't listening. I've had to learn to work in community and Jim and I, when we work together, it just flows. Um, yeah, I like it. And as you see, I can talk a lot and Jim reigns me in and we keep things going. 
it's lovely how it works. Um, yeah, there was so much I, I could say to what you were sharing, Martina. Now most of it's gone. Um, yeah, that was an important point. When the tree showed me and the earth that it's time to live in the earth's guidance, I asked about what all the things that still need changing. She says, don't focus on that. We don't have time to correct what's out. She just needs those of us who can to live the example in line with her for others to see. If we keep protesting, we look at what is deemed right and wrong. But if we live in harmony, it's a lifestyle that isn't seen. And we need that example. She needs it months ago. And she's saying, come in line, live with this. Positive and negative to me, Martina, is that which is either towards life or away from life. So it's either life-giving or life-taking. It's taking us away from that life, that connection, that vitality. It's not right or wrong. It's towards or away from life. Talking stick in the middle. Yeah, yeah, so true. And, you know, and so there's a couple of things here. Um, <laughs> my friends in Pine Ridge reminded me because I forgot. I can't find it quickly. There is a recording uh, of the Kogi when they were down for that one conference with us. It's in my Sanctuaries of the Earth Mother uh, YouTube. I, it's going to take me a while to find it or you all can go look. But I will post it up. I'll post it later. I think I know the video you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. If you just type in, literally type in the Kogis into YouTube, you will find pretty, because I finally remember who you are. So they're easy to find on YouTube. Okay. Just type it in. So no worries. I love it when somebody knows how to do it better than me. <laughs> I did that and I didn't see ours, but I did. I couldn't really, I was watching the, so yeah. Okay. So thank you, Tom, for reminding me that I forgot my own stuff. <laughs> And this, to me, is how community works. We all Absolutely. add into each other. I love to see community working. So thank you once again. This is a powerful circle here today. All of us sitting in it, those listening, those who will hear it later. Uh, I felt it when we came on. So thank you all for being here, especially you guys up there in Pine Ridge, too. Um, the other thing Chris said, let me. I'm going to throw that out there, too. And I've heard this from the Kogi as well. It also came up last night a bit. Now, this is coming from someone, me, who's earned my white hair. Um, way back in the day, I protested Vietnam. I was just a puppy. I marched with Dr. King twice as a puppy. Uh, I've been a protester all along, and, and I've fluctuated back and forth because I've walked the spiritual road, So I've and I've educated. So I've done a lot of different things. I was at Standing Rock, and I ran the a lot of the virtual stuff on Standing Rock. This is not the time for just activism. This is definitely a mixed time. This is a time of the heart. We need the people to stand up peacefully like we did at Standing Rock and, and talk about things that have to be done. But activism alone will run us into a wall. We will turn into that that we hate, and we cannot have that. I saw an interesting thing from... Um, Oh, Greta Thunberg, she just turned 21 yesterday or the day before, um, who I love. And I worked with that group as a senior for a while. Um, but even she's saying that now. And, you know, the activism is great. We have to keep it up. We have to keep showing what's being done. But we got to go way beyond that now. And that's also what the Kogi were saying. Remember our whole being. Stay in our hearts stay in that love thing. I'm paraphrasing them now, but uh, I'm glad you said that, Chris, because it reminded me that piece from last night. Oh, great. Thank you, Martina. I'll do that later. And I'll post that up so people can watch it again if they want. I was surprised I had a separate um, recording of that. But apparently when that happened, my computer started recording. I didn't even know. And they allowed me to uh, posted i of course asked permission before i did uh, it's really interesting too because i thought there was only one of them there then two and next thing i know we had five or six we had half the we had a family unit there 
Whew, okay, so we are getting, we've only got like 12 more minutes to go. So where do you guys want to go? You in the listening booth and Chris and I will go there. Um, if anyone would like, I would love to share a song if we have time. Would oh. that be okay? Oh, please do. Okay. Now the song is in my creation. Uh, it's by it's called Mother Earth by Caroline. Highly recommend checking her out. She has the voice of an angel that channels the essence of Mother Earth. Quite frankly, so I will give it my best shot to do her justice. Okay. Uh -huh. Listen to the trees, listen to the spirits of the earth begging us, please stop listening to greed. Listen to the rivers, listen to the sea, listen to the spirits of the deep begging us, please. Stop listening to grief. She sent the drought to warn us. She sent the storms to scold us. But we don't listen. We burn and we break and we take and we take and we take till it's too late. Oh, where did the bees go? Where did the trees go? Where will man go when he's lost the high beat beneath his feet? The high beat beneath his feet. Oh. This is our home. She gives us home, Mother Earth. Can you feel her heart beat beneath your feet? Her heart beat beneath your feet. Listen to the animals, listen to the trees, listen to the spirits of the earth begging us, please. Stop listening to greed. Listen to the rivers, listen to the sea, listen to the spirits of the deep begging us, please. Stop listening to greed. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Wow, perfect. Much respect. Thank you for that. You've got the people on the res thanking you. They said we needed a song. And they can't do it because we wouldn't be able to hear it from there. Wow. Something I'd like to throw in here before we finish. Mm -hmm. You, earlier in one of your sharings, Martina, mentioned whether you felt what you're doing makes a difference. There's a story I heard a long ago, which was doing the rounds for a while, of about a young girl on a beach, and the waves were washing in masses of fish, like young, small fish, onto the shore, and so many of them were dying and going to die. And this young girl's going along the beach, picking up fish and throwing them back in. And a guy comes along and questions her about how much of a difference she makes because she, you know, he pointed out all the fish. What she was get, doing wasn't going to make a big difference to the whole mass. But she goes, makes a difference to that fish, makes a difference to that fish, makes a difference to that fish. Look at each individual action as an 
action in itself, not as a comparison to anything else, but because of what it is. This is how the mother looks. She looks each and every action, not as a separate thing, as part of the whole. And each, everything we do makes a difference. Are we making a difference towards something or away from something, which is that positive and negative, towards life, away from life? Step towards life in every action, every breath, every mind, every connection we have is life affirming if we step and move in that direction. Talking stick in the middle. Well said. Absolutely right. I put my contact info there too if if uh, Nancy or Martina want to be in touch or connect in with our sanctuaries group. Maybe you already are. I tried to find you guys on Facebook. I was going to send friend requests, but it won't let me because it says I don't know you. <laughs> Good old Facebook's getting freakier by the day. Um, you, you both had it so much. Martina, I would love to be able to record that song separately and put it out there if you're willing at some point. That'd be brilliant, yeah. Okay. So try to connect up with me since I can't do it with you. and Maybe you can either, but anyway, contact info is there. Uh, I'd love to be able to put that up on our sanctuary. I'll give you my info there now. No problem. Okay. okay. Yeah, I guess we can't even send friend requests anymore unless we know somebody. I don't get it. What's the point? <laughs> There's my contact for Facebook as well, Good. if anybody wants it. Okay. I'd almost like to hear something from everybody before we leave because I yeah, each feel exactly. each of us has got so much to add. I've talked a lot, so pass that on. I think we did. I think I did pretty well. I hope I did pretty well moving it around. I hope everyone's felt they got to put mm. in. I'm going to um, start with the people on Pine Ridge that are losing their phone charge so they may zap out at any time. They just want to thank everyone for being part of this. They've done a lot of these circles over the years with me. Different groups of them, different members. Tom has always been there. Um, they thought this was one of the best circles that they've been in in a long time. Everybody there felt the energy, felt. Oh, I know what they're saying. They felt the spirit of the circle. I'm, I'm doing some interpreting as we go along. So they say thank you, and they're going to take the energy of this uh, with them, and they'll be able to play this so at least they can hear the the um, audio parts later. And it, whoops. I guess they were right because they just, with that, <laughs> their signal was gone. So, yes, Chris, I totally agree. So where do we want to start? Who wants to start that final words type thing? They have to be pretty brief because we only have about five minutes, but that's we're good at that. Some of us. Nancy, you're first on my list of people that I'm seeing in the line. There you go. Okay. Um, Jim, I actually am connected to you on Facebook. Um, maybe you don't recognize me, but you actually just sent me a message on Messenger about connecting with me regards to HHS list. I'm not sure what HHS, you said your, my name was on HHS list. Hmm. So I'm not sure what that is. Okay. Well, we'll look. I thought I read yeah. this, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually at the gathering at uh, yes. Montezuma. Yes. And I was at the elders in uh, Sedona. I mean, at Sedona. Um, Cottonwood. Cottonwood. So yeah. I was actually at yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's I look I different every time. I'm, I'm a chameleon. I, you know, I'm <laughs> so. Anyways, yeah, I've been following and stuff, so um, not much to say. I'm just, um, I'm glad to, you know, connect with like-minded people, continue on our journey, and I appreciate you facilitating this for us. So thank you. Charmin, you're next in line. Hey. Ah, I just want to like open up a space to just shake anything out that we've been sitting for so long. And so 
I feel like movement is really important for our cells to revitalize and for our minds to just ease and shake off all the things that we don't need. And I was just oh, reminded of the beauty of dance and allowing ourselves to free ourselves of inhibitions and judgments and just feel our body's natural rhythms. So I think that... Um, my final thoughts are listening to the earth is in one way the earth speaks is through the sounds to recalibrate our body internally to get back to that frequency, our natural rhythm. And it reminds us to be joyful and playful and taste the sweet nectars. And that is kind of my final words of don't forget to taste the sweet nectars. There's a lot of heaviness and we were dropping into the breath that I had tears flowing down my eyes and face, I was leaking. And um, there's that aspect and we can get caught up in that a lot because it's very real. So just reminding us all to remember the joyous moments in life and smile, let the corners of your mouth lift up and remember that dancing will set you free. Thank you for facilitating and guiding us all together. Wow. Right. Um, thank you so much for creating this safe, sacred space. Thank you for allowing me to be seen, to be heard, and for singing as well. It's been an absolute delight. So in in the words of the Irish, Gaurav Meal Amahagut Makarda which translates as a thousand thank yous, my friends. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. Chris, you're muted. Um, I'd like to ask Martina, if you can stay in contact with Jim, because your sense of connection with nature and the elements, I feel is greater than you realize, and I'd like you to see you be a part of what Jim and I are doing through SOTAM and any other activities because what you add is really worthwhile and I'd like to hear more of it. Already done. You're right. I agree. Final words, Chris? Okay, final words. I have this thing down where I live is a beach and I've adopted this beach this is the one place when I go I pick up everything that doesn't belong that I come across I can't try and clean up all the world wherever I see it because there's so much um, it's just tricky but I can take one place and make it my special place even if there's a massive amount of stuff there if you pick one spot with an area and I'm going to keep this clean. I sort of call it adopt a beach. Once you adopt your place, look after it. Treat it with the respect that you feel the Earth Mother deserves and let you and her establish your relationship in that place. And I find the more we establish this care relationship, the more I hear her and feel her and live in her presence. She has taught me so much in that one place that we have a special relationship. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, thanks to everybody. This was really a power. We brought in a lot of things. And I did keep it moving quicker than I usually do because we are under this time constraint. We probably were already cut off, but that's all right. It's still it's on the recording. Um, so just thank you. I thought it was a great. Oh, good. I'm going to copy that saying by Martina. I was thinking of my Mayan relatives. I am you and you are me, uh, being such an important saying as well, especially now. We're all one. So let's just keep this going. Thanks for being here. We'll do more together. Um, maybe we'll do more with this circle. Who knows? It'll come about. Thank you all very, very much. Love you all. Whoops, almost forgot that. Love you all too. Thank you so much and go rub some dirt on your face.
I see <laughs> you already are. Good work. Yeah, it was yeah. really shiny clay sunburn hat, and I was like, I just want that on me now. <laughs> yeah, you can feel it. Right. Thank you very much. Much love and respect, everybody. I really hey. appreciate it. Hi, Sunbury. Hey. Hey. Much love, brother. Hey, much brother. Yes, and he loved you. Well, guys. It looks out. like we're about to get the boot. Somebody else is coming into the room. Bye. All right. <laughs> Peace.